here we go. Another show, Crooked Spine Show with Tara Perrin. She is in, in, in Florida. What part of Florida? Palm Beach Gardens. Palm Beach Gardens. I am jealous. I'm in cold weather in California. It's amazing. I don't get it. We're here to talk about do vitamins actually work? Okay. When we have enough minerals in our vitamins, the minerals and vitamins in our body helps fight disease, helps your immune system, helps things going. But how do we test it? How do we know do we have enough? based on our ethnicity, based on our lifestyle, based on our diet even too, do we get enough from our foods? Tara's help, here to help us understand how, it's going to be kind of a Q&A, understand how this works and how it goes. So Tara, give us a quick background of what you, how you got into this. Yeah, so um, I have been a lifelong lover of nutrition, exercise. I've been a triathlete, a marathoner, um, talk group fitness, been a personal trainer, all of the things. And so uh, it's really just been like my core passion to be able to um, teach people how to live better, but also how to make the right choices with food, because we're really inundated with so many different things, you know, diets and keto and plant-based and all these different buzzwords. And the marketing is tremendous. So you're just, you know, every day it's like, well, should I eat this or don't eat that? You know, I mean, every other day, eggs are good for you and bad for you all at the same time. Nice. So um, I, I really just, you know, I, I like to just help people live their best life. And it really starts fundamentally with nutrition. Mm -hmm. Well, a lot of it is you, you did events, you were a competitor for once, you understood what works for your body and you go to events, right? You go to pick up your, your pack before a marathon or triathlon and how many booths are there trying to sell you their stuff, or give away their samples for their products. And they may not be there next year. Like you'd mentioned, Absolutely. you go online, you, you, for example, if you, if you uh, subscribe to a nutrition magazine at that point, one week will say it'll be good for you. One second, like, don't get, I'll call this cancer. So how Absolutely. do you, how do we start breaking down exactly what it takes to understand exactly what it takes in our, in our, if you want to call it our American healthcare system, how does it not, if you want to call it, make this a priority for our health, even without having disease? How does that happen? Great question. So I have been in the specialty laboratory space for a while now, and I really wish that more people could have access to specialty mm -hmm. lab testing because it just elevates your ability to really calculate exactly where your deficiencies are. So you can hear, you know, let's just say on the news with COVID, you know, it was like everybody ran out to get vitamin D and zinc because they said that that helps your body. But in the end, if you don't need those things, if you're not deficient in those things, mm -hmm. it's actually going to cause more harm than good. So I think fundamentally it starts with number one, listening to your body, certainly by all means, but number two, seeking out some other ways um, in order to maximize, because let's face it, these products, supplements, um, mm -hmm. all the things, very expensive. You know, they have flashy ways of luring you into subscription models. And before you know it, you've spent thousands and you're not really sure if it's actually working. So fundamentally, Get that personalized lab test that is specific, unique to your body, your biochemistry, your lifestyle, and it's going to tell you exactly what you need. And break down the test itself. How does that test work? And what kind of readings would you expect? Is it a high range, low range, within the range? How does that work? Yes. So it is the one that I personally do is not only a urine test, but it's also a blood spot test. So um, you squeeze, you prick your finger, you squeeze it out onto a blood spot card. So that will measure your fatty acids, but your whole omega family. So it's really about putting the total picture together. So when you go to the doctor, let's just say, they're just going to give you a direct measure, right? So yeah. your B and my B, we're going to both be in this, call it a reference mm -hmm. range. Yeah. But when I check your B vitamins, I'm looking at a number of different factors that are influencing that B vitamin status. Um, we can also look at your genetic predisposition. So how is your brain cognitive function? You know, do you maybe need a little bit of extra boost with some more of those, um, let's just call it healthy fats, the omegas, mm -hmm. or are you good? You know, some people don't really need that extra stuff. And so that's where it gets tricky with taking maybe CoQ10 because you heard it's really good for you. But if it's something that your body doesn't actually need, you could do more harm than good. And um, realizing that vitamins, minerals, supplements, these are just as damaging as some pharmaceutical products if utilized incorrectly. I like that you're giving people a caution versus, oh, just go buy a couple of multivitamins and do this and this, you'll be fine. A lot of people, I think, 
they won't take the time because you're never told exactly you should take the time. When, when you talk about vitamins and minerals, you mentioned it's not going to go too. Um, with, with you, do you talk about people's lifestyle, what they're going through? Maybe their stressful event, maybe they had a baby, maybe they're doing events also to doing marathon triathlons. Do you go through that with them too? Absolutely. A hundred percent. You have to, Good. um, let's just say even just something very paramount as sleep. You know, mm -hmm. some people go through different stressful periods of time in their life where they're not maybe sleeping properly. Mm -hmm. So they may need some supplementation on the back end to help support that. Um, certainly if they're doing a lot of, let's just say like a marathon, it's a lot of stress on your body. You know, it's a long hours of being in those higher heart rate zones and really pushing that to the max. So your body's going to need the support, whether it be some amino acids or you're giving yourself some maybe extra creatinine to help support that muscle fiber recovery. Um, certainly antioxidants are going to play a very, very key role there because you're allowing all that lactic acid and all that toxicity yeah. to build up. You know, people think, oh yeah, I'm doing like CrossFit five times a week and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm going all out, but they're not giving that, their body that support back because they don't necessarily know that that's really what they need to do. And, or they may be supporting with things that aren't really helping in the long run. And let's take a step back to why does our body need vitamins and minerals to stay healthy? What, what, what's the, what's the concern there? Yeah, great question. So it's this foundation for basically all of the functions in our body. So um, even, you know, looking at um, different supplements in what they do and what processes they do in our bodies, like I mentioned, neurofunction. So with a supplement like creatinine, they've actually done it's the most heavily studied um, natural supplement and um, in both athletes and just let's call it regular people, where now they're starting to see that that does have an impact on actually Alzheimer's disease and even in reversal of these things. So basic, you know, you think, oh, it's just a bunch of vitamins and minerals, you know, and what does it matter? Well, it actually really matters a lot. And that's why I like to take the data points of the testing, the lifestyle factors, and then come up with the personalized protocol that's actually going to be effective for you instead of just throwing darts at the wall and hoping one or two of them stick. So with one of the things you're, you're giving someone a reason why medically or in a lab test. So these are the numbers this is why you're sure this is your lifestyle. Let's get you up to where you need to be. How often do you retest to check with the, where they can rebalance? Absolutely. Great question. And I do get this question a lot. So it depends, right? Mm -hmm. If someone has a lot of imbalances and there are a lot of, and so the testing, I'll take a little step back, doesn't just talk about supplementation. So there are different levels. So if someone's sort of in the moderate level, we can usually tweak their diet where they don't actually even have to take a supplement, which Got is it. amazing. I love doing that all day long. I'm like, look at this. We just did these little right. things and, and we fixed it. No supplement needed, no extra cost, right? Um, but if someone does have a lot of insufficiencies, meaning that they really may be exercising super hard, which I've seen a lot of athletes eating a standard American, a sad diet, um, not a lot of nutrition in there. So uh, they're really depleted in a lot of areas. So not only do we need to fix the diet, but now we need to also get on target with our supplementation. And I test usually at a four month mark to encourage the progress. So, um, you know, when they start to see the numbers coming down and they're like, yeah, it's working, this is great. Then it encourages even more. And usually by that point, we could start to taper some of the supplements tweak in the diet a little bit more and, you know, just be on a really healthy path. And so usually four months and then I come back, they'll come back around eight months. We'll do another follow-up test just to make sure we're on the right track and take it from there. You know, usually I'll do my testing about once every eight, nine months, depending mm -hmm. on what's going on in my life. Um, it seems to be about what works for me. Well, a lot of it, as you're saying is too, is if someone's able to change their lifestyle, their diet, and at that point, you can then, okay, now you've done enough to change it. Now you have a four month window if your body can recalibrate. That point, it can actually absorb it so you can see the results change. And, and taking a step back, the, the bird's eye point of view, how come our foods and our, our nutrition now, like you mentioned, the SAD diet, doesn't actually give us nutrients and vitamins we need and minerals? Why doesn't it do that? So many reasons. I mean, food is a business, mm -hmm. it is no longer about actual food. Um, especially, you know, I mean, carbs are important. They're especially important for athletes because, you know, it is the fundamental point of our energy production, but 
even look at something like bread, you know, they strip it of everything and then they put all these fake things in that help to boost it up. So it's basically like synthetic food. Um, mm -hmm. You ultimately can't get necessarily all your vitamins and minerals from just a standard American diet. It's I think 63% of the diet is consistent of things like soda and processed foods. You know, we're always grab and go this and on the move that. And so if you're not taking the time, you know, maybe on a Sunday or a Wednesday to just grill some chicken breast, you know, get some basic stuff, make a bean salad. A bean salad will last you all week. And that's great complex carbs. You got some protein in there, you know, throw a couple of vegetables in. Now I'm getting one or two servings of my vegetables. So there are little ways to, to help boost this standard American diet situation we're in, but it's mostly, you know, stopping at McDonald's on the way home. And I've seen a lot of athletes doing this and it's just now compounded, you know, all the fried, saturated trans fats that are just in everything. And one thing I'm on a total platform for Dr. Tony is the whole plant-based impossible burger situation is just a no-go, like stay away. The first five ingredients are basically oils and processing. There's basically no plants in the burger. So I say, listen, if you're a vegetarian and you want to eat a burger, make a black bean burger, you know, and put some vegetables in there. It's absolutely delicious. And you don't miss the taste at all. If you want a burger, just eat the burger. <laughs> you mentioned earlier too, when something is marketed so much, you have those questions, hey, why isn't everyone just gravitated if it's that good? You know, looking right. at McDonald's, looking at things like that too, looking at fast food restaurants, it's something when I tell my patients, if something doesn't rot within a few days or so, or even a week or so, come on now, what is it plastic? Is it real? Is it not real? What's going on with it? Absolutely, absolutely. And that's the other thing, you know, all the meats that we are consuming now are full of, even though they say, you know, oh, no antibiotics, no this, no that, they're, you know, in these situations where they're basically eating their own feces and, you know, they have to sort of combat all these parasites that are growing. And um, the food source is just so tainted. Even if you go with something that's, you know, grass fed, grass finished, there's still some point where it's like, mm, is it really that, you know, unless you're getting it straight from a farmer who went out and plucked the cow and told him this is yours, you know, and watched him slaughter it and do all the things. That's really the only way we could be a hundred percent sure. Well, and I think, I think you're saying is, is almost like I got to be efficient. If I have a work schedule then take care of fun time, I have to do because I want to, at that point, I'm not going to go and slaughter my own cow or cook my own chickens or defeather them or whatever people do with chickens these days. At that point, I'm going to, yes, I'll eat the organic foods that are kind of healthier for me, but I want to make sure I'm getting enough nutrients. So I getting the blood test that allows you to go, okay, this is where you're short, the supplement here. At that point, let's make sure your body gets better. Also too, in supplementation, omega-3 fatty acid, people talk about that a lot. What is a good source you want to call it naturally? And also is something to where you do a pill form, you do olive oil straight, or what do you normally do? Well, I like to try to do it with a diet, right? That's your first point of entry. And so um, usually the oils, you know, your avocado oil, your um, olive oil, mm -hmm. I love to just, you know, eat olive oil plain. It's amazing. I put I it in my hair. I put it on my face. I do everything with olive oil. But, um, you know, obviously nuts are going to be a really great source as well. In particular, walnuts, they're a huge brain food. And um, fish, you know, fish is a great source, mm -hmm. in particular yeah. salmon. Um, and if you do, you get the wild salmon, you know, you're also decreasing your burden for a possible mercury over load, mm -hmm. which is another issue that comes with fish. So, you know, you're always balancing these very gentle scales. And by the way, the testing that I do does also test for mercury, lead, cadmium, gallium, which is in um, MRIs. So if people get a lot of MRIs, you want to make sure that you're able to get rid of that toxins, those toxins in your body, because if they build up, they can cause a lot of issues. Um, Tony Robbins recently in his new book, he just talked about his bout with mercury poisoning because he went basically to a pescatarian diet from, you know, eating all this mm -hmm. bad food, you know, a lot of meats and things like that ended up with really, really severe mercury poisoning. And that's mm -hmm. the thing, you know, some people can get rid of toxicity more easily than others. And again, genetics play a role in that. Are you a victim of your genetics? Absolutely not.
Well, a lot of it is can can we know where we stand by doing the testing often enough to go, okay, look, when I do a testing here at that point, I kind of wait too long. So you're helping someone understand how to take care of their body and then read their body, become their best doctor, correct? 100%. Absolutely. And that's the thing, like these things are all ways that we can live optimally. So Mm -hmm. we're not waiting on the backside for a diagnosis. We're being proactive. Mm -hmm. We're getting in there. We're finding all these tools that will help us potentially sidestep one of these genetic mutations, let's say. And I mean, I'll just give a very brief personal story for me. Again, knowing my history, athlete, all the things. I am also a breast cancer survivor and I was blindsided by the diagnosis because again, um, organic, I drink lemon water in the morning. I take vitamins, you know, all these things. So I was like, wait, I don't go to McDonald's and, you know, eat these terrible things. Right. So I was shocked. And quite frankly, a lot of my friends were like, oh my gosh, wow, if she got it, like what's going to happen to me? You know, the ones who are eating the donuts as they're running out the door with their cup of coffee. So, um, you know, that's my story. And I say, listen, if it happened to me, it can absolutely happen to you, but I want to help you live that best life and not get the diagnosis because being in the healthcare system now is just a hamster wheel. It is awful. I have fired so many doctors, Um, And I'll be honest, even functional medicine doctors, you know, you really have to do your due diligence. You have to find the right ones because not there's not a one size fits all. And um, you have to be your own health advocate. So when, you you know, they recommend something for you, it's like, okay, well, what's the why behind it? As we talked about earlier, Mm -hmm. you know, there's always got to be a why. And then does that make sense to you? Does does your intuition feel like that follows with what's in alignment with your own personal feelings? And so that's really what I've done a lot, like through my journey being, um, you know, I didn't have chemo, but I definitely have radiation. And then my oncologist is like literally forcing the drugs down my throat. Like she's like, you have to have this and the guilt, like you have a family. And what if you don't take this and then you die and you leave your family like bad stuff. Like, okay, lady, I'm, you know, I'm taking ground flaxseed. I'm taking my dim with the calcium deglutarate and all the things, you know, I'm doing meditation now, which I'd never done before. I was like, oh, I I can't do that. Now I'm like, oh my God, if I don't get my meditation in, in the morning, my whole day is like sideways. So, um, yeah, but it's, it, it really is. Um, it was a shocking and eye opening to me and kind of upsetting that I didn't know the things I know now, you know, if I had these little tools in my kit, would I have gotten a diagnosis? Mm. That's the question. Well, a lot of it is you now, now you understand and you knew before too, how to read people. When someone's trying to force their throat, and usually it's the person, not the profession, the person, not profession, they just don't know how to present it properly. Hey, look, I, I have a patient who's very, very specific because she had breast cancer also. Um, her doctors, and she finally went to a concierge doctor because she said, look, I can't, these doctors I'm paying my insurance for, give me 10 minutes, and one will say one thing, one will say the other, opposite, I can't trust them anymore. When you lose that trust, at that point, yes. you got to have someone like yourself, hey, she's done it before, she's lived it, she understands how to walk you through your lifestyle and correlate that with what you're missing or what you may be even having too much of to make things actually more even. I wish I knew now what I <laughs> wish I knew then what I know now for sure. And yes, it's absolutely my mission to just bring this to more people, the light that there are mm-hmm. detailed testing. And I actually fired my primary care phys- physician altogether right. because it was just useless for me. I do my own testing and I follow my gut and I, you know, look at my labs and I figure out how I can treat my own self. Um, you know, I decided not to do mammograms anymore. I was all done with that. I just do thermography now, which has been a blessing because I had an ear clog and the doctor had no idea what to do. She's like, take some Zyrtec. And I was like, I I don't want to take Zyrtec. I'm like, I don't think that's the problem. So I went and had my thermography read. I had congestion and I had some other areas that needed, you know, some support. I had one session of acupuncture gone, like totally gone. Stood up. I was like, done. All Thank gone. You. Yeah. Well, and and the same- that a lot of it is, you know, how to now find other sources versus your MD and use your health insurance to get yourself healthy and using something like this, like this platform here, and even more and more is getting people to understand there are other options. 
Yes, you, you may bet. have to get a pocket here and there, but is that going to be cheap in the long run? Because you actually get better. You actually get your body healthy again versus being sick all the time. And you miss out on quality of life. So mm -hmm. you're missing out on things. And it's, it's depressing because now you're starting to feel sorry for yourself because everyone else is like, oh, I feel so badly for you. That's all you hear all the time when you have a diagnosis. You know, oh, mm -hmm. you're sick, you're sick. And I, I was thinking to myself, I'm not sick. Like, yeah, I have a diagnosis, but mm -hmm. I'm not sick. And this Good. is going to pass and we're going to move on. We gave some different perspectives to yourself. To go, how, do, how do I now get over this diagnosis because my body is healthy? At that point, now keep it healthy so it doesn't happen. And I had a heart attack three years ago. My buddy said, you're healthier than most people around me. Um, I've done marathon triathlons like that. Dental issue, hereditary, wouldn't know until I was on the table. So, so now, I mean, now, yes, I take care of my health a little bit better. I'm more aware, but without that, if you want to call it event, at that point, I would have never known. And I mean, the doctor said, said it, if you hadn't worn healthy, you would have had it 10 years ago. So can we look at our health as, you said, quality of life? Can we prevent events from happening? Maybe not, but can we recover from them faster because we know how to stay healthy and get healthier faster when we do have an event? You bet, you bet. And that's one another test that I am introducing into my practice, which is a, a cardiovascular check, but on a functional level. So again, not looking at like your basic labs with the direct measure, but how are all those different things that affect heart health interacting together. And that's always the key is how they all go together because you can have, okay, this is high. You need a pill for this. Oh, this is low. You're good on that. Well, no, that's not necessarily the case because if that's low and something else is off or maybe getting close to that range, maybe it's not off yet. That's a predictor of something that could possibly happen. And so if I see some of those things, I absolutely say, definitely go see a cardiologist, you know, get a calcium score, do the stress test, um, you know, take it a little bit deeper because there's something here. And obviously I'm not a cardiologist and I don't you even play one on TV. You know, like, you're able to walk them through, look, this is your testing. This is what you go and tell your doctor. So then they can do more testing to find out exactly what's going on. You're going to be, we, we have to, as healthcare practitioners, sad to say, when we send our, our, our patients to specialists, we almost have to dictate what they're going to say to them to get the right testing, the right information, because they're walking and go, how do you feel? Ask some chest pain. Uh, take some, uh, take some times. You'll be fine. You know, it's something to where that you're, they're not going to know. So you have to really walk them through what to say, how to say. So the next step you're walking them through to get that next testing if need be. So they get the health results. Like I said, quality of life. It's huge, really, really I, big. I, I, do not be, be sidelined. <laughs> Yes. I mean, how, how long did it take you after you had your episode to kind of get back in the game? How about long was it? About a month. I tried okay. to get back two weeks later. I'm like, yes. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but because, because I was on, I was on a heavy, um, a an anticoagulant. I would hit a heart rate and also would drop me. I'm like, okay, let me sit down for a second. But I knew I can recover because I had done my own research, talked to my cardiologist done the cardio um, rehab and I even had patients, Hey, do you get cardio rehab? No, let's go do this. So even a patient, I don't even, I know the patients, but I know their insurance, go and ask your doctor for this, go and tell your doctor you want this. At that point, they don't know. They're not told. Right. At right. That and that's, that's what it comes down to having the toolkit and having the knowledge and then sharing that knowledge with the people mm -hmm. so that you could choose to do whatever you want with it. You know, obviously um, you can implement the changes or you can just continue on, but yeah. You have the power then at that point. Mm -hmm. And it's not just like, oh, woe is me. You know, I have no control over my health because of my genetics. Well, sometimes that is a problem and you can't do something about it, but you can certainly mitigate the issues. And, you know, like you said, you would have had it 10 years earlier. Maybe it would have been a lot more serious, mm -hmm. even to the point where you weren't here having this podcast with me. So, yeah. you know, you have to say, okay, there's a reason I have to start to get the message out and help the people. Well, a lot of it is when you have the knowledge like you're saying at that point, how do you get someone to at least be due diligence? At that point, they know what they're going to do because they're not going to be told by the medical doctor. They're not going to be told, hey, look, Try this, this, and this, and what to look for if one, too. So a lot of it, and you mentioned, too, a lot of it is the dependence on medicine. How do you get someone to understand, hey, look, you have to take care of your health. It's about you. How do you get the people to shift their mindset on that? That's a great question. Yeah. 
And I think that they have to have the propensity to want to do it first off, right. because you can't force someone to do something that they don't want to do. You know, if someone's a smoker and you're just nagging at them to quit smoking, they're not going to do it until they're fully ready. Um, so, yeah, I think it's it's just, again, education and awareness. And, you know, if at this point when, you know, the, the student is ready, the teacher appears, because there were certain things, even like I said, about meditation for me. You know, if you spoke to me, whatever, 10 years ago, I'd be like, Pfft. Like, I, I can't do that. I'll go for and a now I'm like, yeah, I'll go for runs and push ups, whatever. <laughs> right. <laughs> and now I'm like, if, if I don't do it, my life, I feel depends on it because it's really the only way I can manage the stress and can manage the load. And as far as my lifestyle component, it is definitely one of the keys. And going into meditation, too, what are different kinds that people can start practicing to help their overall body? heal and stay healthy? So there are a million different ways to meditate. Mm -hmm. I know that when someone hears meditation and I am perfectly guilty of this, it was, you have to shut your mind off. You have to sit in a room and be silent and you have to do it for long periods of time. That was my image. And when I asked people Our about life. it. Life, no, I don't have time for that. <laughs> They're like, well, I have, you know, laundry and I have kids and I have all these things to do. I don't have time for that. So mm -hmm. I get it. I feel your pain. Mm -hmm. And so um, one of the tools that I give a lot of my clients to do, it's a very simple technique. Mm -hmm. It's just in the morning. Um, and I stole this from Mel Robbins, but I also had done a, a similar version of it myself. It's just putting your hand on your heart in the morning and just telling yourself that you're safe and you're loved. And I just take in deep breaths of gratitude and exhale love. And um, jo Joe Dispenza has done a lot of research extensively with the HeartMath Institute on that heart brain connection and how it just brings you to a whole nother level of existence. You know, it brings things into your life that you're really amazed of. Like, you're like, how did this happen? And then you say, all right. Well, I guess it's that little meditation thing I do in the morning. And does it have to be for hours? Absolutely not. You know, it could just be a few breaths. I try to do at least a minute. So about seven breaths, give or take. Uh, I've worked up because it's a practice, just like mm -hmm. marathoning. You know, you don't go out and run a marathon in one day. <laughs> um, and I've tried a lot of the different types of um, breathing. So I do the heart math. Some days I'm just not feeling it. You know, it's like some days I feel like um, doing cycling or some days I just feel like doing a walk or other days I feel like really doing a hard workout and I'm going to like get after it. No. So some days I feel like meditating for a really long time and I just try to listen to what my soul is asking for in that moment. But the amount of research that is coming out now about meditation and how it changes your brain, it's unbelievable between, you know, the neuroplasticity, between being more present, between reducing depression and anxiety. And again, you know, going back to the pharmaceutical model where, you know, they just want to give you a pill and they're like, yeah, yeah, this will fix it. But if you just took that little bit of time in the morning and you worked up to it and you started your practice, um, pick the one that's right for you. You know, someone wants a guided meditation. Someone wants to hear mantras, you know, over and over again and repeat them over and over, you know, I am strong, I am courageous, you know, whatever makes you happy. Tony Robbins says the incantations, you know, that's a big part of his, you know, beating the chest and raising the arms in the air and just find what works for you. Transcendental meditation is a course you can take. I know, um, you know, there are a lot of different gurus out there. There's apps now, you know, you have the Calm app and the Breathe app and the this. There's just so much information that it's like, pick one, just one. Well, it's you, like when you have all these apps and these YouTube channels that work it there, that says there's a need and there's a benefit because people are still going back to the apps, still going back to the channel, still doing it. That means it's come full circle. They're seeing the overall benefit for their health, their mind, body, and spirit, correct? No doubt. There is just no doubt about it. The research is so overwhelming mm -hmm. in favor of meditation that, um, I mean, I'm so much more productive if I can just take that little bit of time 
outside of my, my wake up routine, which is just the, you know, I'm safe and I'm loved, but taking that extra time, I do some journaling and I write down, you know, some of my goals, my desires, my ambitions, and just, you know, again, meditate on it. Like just see myself visualization, you know, what your future looks like, because, you know, not every day is peaches and cream and some days are hard. And so to have the ability to go within yourself and say, this is just a temporary thing. I'm going to go here next and just be able to get yourself into that better place exponentially faster. It's going to happen for you. And I I've seen it with myself, my clients, my family, um, you know, and they all give me the, Oh, that sounds goofy. You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm always like tapping, you know, tapping <laughs> the EFT. You know? <laughs> and so they're like, what is she doing now? And I'm just like, I'm just releasing a little stress. Like I just feel a little tightness and I just want to let it go. And, move on about my day. And it, it works a hundred percent. Well, a lot of it, when you have your routine down then you start your day at a lower stress point, so it won't affect your body throughout the day. Cause we don't know what's going to happen. I may walk out to, to, to my car, so I'm not dent to my car. You know, do I yell someone out? Probably not, but you can figure out a way to do it calmly and not let your body stress. Cause that stress built over time, it becomes more and more and more and more and more. You start, you wake up your day that way. That when your whole day is ruined. Uh, I think a lot of it is when I tell my patients, your perception is your reality. You start your perception at, at a positive, loving, grateful state in the morning. So your day may get stressful. We go back to that point. That's your, that's your want to call it your, your staple every time you get in that routine. When you have a routine to make it part of your day. And it's amazing how much more joy you mm -hmm. have in your life. When you just let it go, you know, if someone's road raging and Florida, Florida drivers have yeah. driven all over the country, they're really tough. <laughs> so I have to just, you know, too. Yeah. We can compete with you. <laughs> I'm more. sure you can, but yeah. yeah, I just really have to say it's okay. You know, they're having their day and mm -hmm. I'm just going to come over here and stay in my spot and, you know, just go about the day or, you know, in the grocery line, I am notorious for picking the slowest grocery line. And right. it's usually because there's a problem and there's, you know, something. Else. And I always try to tell myself like, okay, Tara, like this line is going to be the line. Like you got this girl. And I don't know. I think it's like teaching me patience, you know, on a certain right. level. And um, I've had that sort of in the back of my mind with a lot of things that in my life I have struggled with allowing things to happen in their own time and not trying to control every single thing because that's causing stress, right? So mm -hmm. when I'm in the slow line and I see it happening and I just, you know, kind of laugh about it and say, listen, it's meant to be, right? I'm not meant to be running out of this grocery store like a mad lady. So let me just enjoy it. I, now I'm having this feeling of, oh, what is that? Oh, I'm just being overly stressed. Now I know what it is. Let me call my buddy and laugh at myself. That's what I do. Yes, yes. I mean, and it's so much better that way. Like you're just so much happier. And then, you know, something else great happens on the flip side, you know? So it always tends to be the case that when I'm learning the lesson and sometimes it's not easy to absorb it, there's always something better on the other side. Yeah. And I think we could all get that to where when we have that, that mindset, we'll catch that thing that, Oh, that went right. Oh, that person helped somebody. You'll catch them that that inspires your day versus brings your day, your day down. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else for your, yeah. your first show today? I mean, I have all your, in, your, in the show notes, I'll have all her links to her um, Instagram page, uh, Terra Fitness Inspired for one to her TikTok channel too. She's phenomenal on there. She's actually really good. I, I'm impressed. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> good job to help us understand. My takeaway is how do we test ourselves? Are we getting enough minerals and vitamins? And how do we change our diet and even supplement if we need to, to make sure our body's getting enough minerals and vitamins to help with our daily stress, our lives, and a better quality of life so you don't have problems in the future. Absolutely. That's yeah. Right. What's your takeaway? Uh, yeah. what, do you, what do you suggest? What do you, what's your takeaway today? I absolutely suggest getting a personalized test for your nutrients, as well as your oxidative stress and your toxicity load. Because even if you just did one now, let's just say it was a little off, whatever, mm -hmm. maybe you never retest for it, but it's always in the back of your mind. Maybe in years you come around, you circle back to it, but it's um, just having those tools and understanding how they can fit into your life. You know, something simple like meditation where, you know, and again, using the word, I can't do that. Well, if you say you can, or you say you can't, mm -hmm. you're right either way. So mm -hmm. 
we can, but if you want to say you can't, then no, no problem. But in the long term, the benefits will be just exponentially so much better, bring you so much more joy in your life. And really, I think we all just want to be happy at the end of the day. And how do we get there? You know, so that's the, the one message I want to leave is that wherever you are right now, there is another place that can bring you more happiness and more joy if you choose it. Good. And I think when, when we, when I did talk with a guy who does, he's a happy expert. When you have that mindset and you reinforce that every day, your, your life just seems better. Sorry. That's not a bad, it's not a bad thing, right? Yeah. It is. It's a, it's a good side effect to that yeah. medication. <laughs> Um, but yeah, on my website, if you subscribe, uh, www.montaralife.com, subscribe, and I will send you actually a heart health supplement oh, nice. chart that gives you all the reasons why you need, let's just say green tea or CoQ10 or all the things. So you can get a basic guide, especially if you do have a genetic predisposition, um, take a look at the list and uh, possibly at your diet and see how you might be able to incorporate some of those things. But if you just subscribe, I'll email it to you. Fantastic. I like having freebies. That point people get an idea of what their what their what their lifestyle is like now. Do diligence at that point they can actually test it later on. So one last way for the camera. That point people do that normally. And then we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll stop the show and then we'll talk a little bit afterwards. Okay, Thanks. perfect. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.